I uh, recently watched a tutorial on how to set up my mic better in OBS. So hopefully this sounds better. And shout out to the people in my comments who uh, pointed out that my sound sounded like hot garbly gobbly gook. And it just sounded like a kitten climbing up the back of a person who had a t-shirt made out of chalkboard. So thank you. I should understand how, to, how my equipment works. Whatever. But I, I did it. Hopefully this sounds good. If not, you can let me know how to sound better. Regardless, what I do know about is there's a lot of news today. So let's check it out. We got first Bahrain. Bahrain. I honestly had never heard of this country. I, I feel uneducated, but I had never heard of it. But I could plan a travel guide right now. There's a three star hotel in Bahrain. Only $65. A five star hotel, only $170. Yeah, okay, it's an 18 hour flight. Regardless, Bahrain recently made a peace deal with Israel. The second nation in the last 30 days to make a peace deal with Israel, brokered by Donald Trump. That's exciting. More war in the streets than the war in the Middle East. That's kind of definitely true nowadays. But that's that's good to hear. I like world peace. I think there should be a world peace conspiracy. You know, maybe a bunch of people could all get together and we could all conspire for world peace. But then when you think about it, Maybe not everybody has the same idea on how we could go about making world peace. Like the AI robot would be like, if we destroy all the humans, that will be world peace. Yeah. And I don't see, and I don't know if that's a good idea. So maybe we should chill out with like trying to make everyone in the world agree with one one idea. But regardless, there will be some people who say, oh yeah, Mega Twenty Twenty, Zion Don, he just works for Israel. And, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I think that making peace with people in the Middle East is good rather than, you know, fighting wars unnecessarily in the Middle East. So, I mean, I'm going to I understand where they're coming from, but I, I don't I don't subscribe to that theory. I, I like Israel. I like. It's so weird. You got to say, like, I like Jews. <laughs> I like people of all races. I don't have a problem with any particular race. I think that creates some crazy. uh xenophobia that I don't and that leads to some sort of uh you know some history cycle yeah we'll, we'll move on it's a touchy subject I just don't want to point at any country even China or Russia I don't want to be like they're evil straight up there's nothing good about them they're all evil because that's preposterous how, how would I know that how arrogant of me to suggest that so let me check it out we got Fox News we got Times of Israel but we definitely can't check out the New York Times because they won't let us let's check out Fox News Let's read one paragraph. This is really something special. Very, very special, Trump said in the Oval Office, predicting that the region will become more secure and prosperous as a result of the diplomatic move. Now that I can definitely agree with. I can definitely see that happening because, I mean, if, if, if you look at anywhere in the world, anywhere, whether it's Africa or whether it's the Middle East, whether it's even Portland, you look at what's going on in Portland or these major cities that all these riots are happening in. Businesses can't thrive there. They're, they're afraid. If customers are afraid to go to the city center to spend money, why would a business set up shop there? And if a business can't set up shop there, then people can't get a job there at the business. And you see how they like it all works back to itself. There's a really cool uh, recent podcast. I think it came out today. Tim Kennedy on Joe Rogan podcast. with his new Dude, the new Joe Rogan podcast, it looks like it's on a spaceship. Or it looks like at the very, it's either a spaceship or it's an RV of a guy who hunts for spaceships. That's what it looks like in the back. But check out that uh, podcast. It's really cool. He talks about a similar concept to what I was just talking about just now. But anyways, let's move on. So we have Reddit. And Reddit is, of course, you know, a giant cesspool of anti-American propaganda. And, of course, they disagree with the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, objectivists, if you want to call them that. An issue with all of these topics, especially like Kyle Rittenhouse is a great example. There's people who will paint it this way extreme, they'll paint it this way extreme. And the truth is most likely a Venn diagram in the middle. Like the like right wing people will exclude certain details and make it all the way this. Left wing people will exclude certain details and make it look all the way that. But the truth is is, you know, it's probably just a, a big mixture. But I I personally believe that the objective truth is he acted in self defense. He was not there to murder people. They didn't cross state lines with a gun to shoot people. I don't even think, I think the evidence is that he didn't cross state lines with a gun. But regardless, we have such glaring Italian hypocrisy. Too many seem to be willingly blind to the rising domestic terror threat. 
white supremacists, white nationalists, boogaloo boys, proud boys, and all opposed to the country. Considering the apparent brigade, a brigade, aka a bunch of people disagreeing with the article. <laughs> Here's an in-depth video analysis. Oh, I wonder if that's my video. It's probably not. Points to note, Shooter did not extinguish the dumpster fire. Not that it would matter. I mean, we have video of him running with a fire extinguisher, and we have video of them setting a dumpster on fire. It just happens that somebody else actually put the fire out. Shooter did not render aid to anyone, but did ask if anyone needed aid to a group of people who immediately called him out for pointing a gun at them previously. And a lot of he said, she said, bullshit. Peter's head was not, was in no grave danger from any skateboard. Video evidence appears to show the skateboard being used to attempt to restrain the shooter, who at that point had already shot and killed someone. Restrain the shooter? Now, I've heard people say it to me before, but this is absolutely some semantic gymnastics. Like, what, some verbal kung fu. What do you, what do you mean? Use the skateboard to restrain him. Okay, and then the knee on top of George Floyd was used to restrain him. You see what I did there? We can we can use all these different words. Like, you know, oh, I, I punched the kid in the face because he I was restraining him. It's just some weird semantics. Peter did not have a Molotov cocktail thrown up. No, I, I actually reported on that incorrectly. I, I put a question mark. I didn't say for sure. But that's what I was hearing. That's what was being reported early on. I actually took that video down. So didn't want to throw, I didn't want to muddy the waters with the idea that he might have had a Molotov cocktail thrown him. I believe it was a bag of Pringles. A bag with a can of Pringles in it. That's, I don't know, honestly, that's what I saw. A pistol isn't even that deadly anyways. How on earth could this man shoot a guy with a pistol? <laughs> what? <laughs> the amount of cognitive dissonance that, it, that exists on Reddit. Like, you could literally... You Google the definition for cognitive dissonance and a link to the front page of Reddit pulls up. But anyways, let's move on. That's a bunch of nonsense. Kansas City Chiefs fans booed players for supporting racial equality. What a disgrace. Brady Langman writing this story. Before Thursday night's NFL kickoff, a game between the Kansas City Chiefs and Houston Texans with roughly 16,000 in attendance. I believe that's a much smaller number than they had to have six seats apart. We got our first glimpse at what the league will look like after a summer of racial upheaval. And it looks like a hell of a lot like the same NFL that once promised to find players for kneeling during the national anthem. During the pregame, the Chiefs and Texans took to the field together to lock arms. It's what the NFL called a moment of silence dedicated to the ongoing fight for equality in our country. Following months of protests after the death of George Floyd, that resulted in the deaths of over 30 people so far. That's my quote. I had that at the hands of white police officers. It was the latest attempt by NFL Commissioner Roger Goodall to virtue signal and make a lot of money for the NFL. However, I added that quote too, not, not watching. <laughs> NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell to backtrack the league's mishandling of the 2016 National Anthem protests, following his admission in June that we were wrong for not encouraging his players to speak out against racism and pro protest. So just, it's gonna come up later, it's gonna be more relevant, but just so we're clear, the owner of the NFL, the NFL commissioner or whatever, he is saying we were wrong for not encouraging you guys to protest. We were wrong. We support your movement. Remember that. As the cameras locked in on our star quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson, who were both featured in the video that called for the league's admission of guilt this summer, all you could hear were boos. Though you probably wouldn't have known it if you weren't watching it live on NBC, the official Kansas City Chiefs Twitter account seemingly edited audio of a sitcom-style applause track on top of the moment. Hey, really? Okay, now this one's actually them booing. Now let's let's be clear what they're booing. Let's be clear. These are people who paid money to come be entertained. They are not booing the idea that we should fight social injustice. They are not booing the idea of systemic racism being abolished or whatever, disrupted. They're not booing that. They're booing being pandered to. They're booing being high schooled and, and belittled and having this, this politics be thrown into their entertainment. It would be like if you're eating a bowl of gummies 
or if you open a if you open a fortune cookie and it was just like isn't it crazy how trump downplayed the coronavirus <laughs> like what I, I just want a fucking fortune i want to feel good about my next week in a big way get out of here with this so yeah they're booing this noise because that's what it is it's noise it's virtue signaling it's the nfl trying to make more money because there's just no way the nfl doesn't want to make more money no way they want to make less so yeah that, that's going on nice i mean I, I think it's pretty clear the the public backlash for things like cuties things like the nfl things like lebron james and the nba there's definitely a backlash and i think we're going to feel it i think the new Disney Mulan is a slap in the face. You can, I can make a whole video about that, but enough people who are much more eloquent at speaking than I am have already made videos talking about why the original Mulan, anime, animated Mulan, is beautiful. It's empowering. It's great for feminism. It's a great take on feminism. Amazing. And then the new one is literally just a Mary Sue. The Mary Sue, just, it's just some weird... I'm sure you could look into it as propaganda of some sort. I think it's mostly just a bad story. Also, they got to charge 30 bucks on top of your Disney Plus account to watch it? Like, what? Why do I, why do you even pay for Disney Plus? For the privilege? It's like a flea market. I got to pay you to, to pay you? Nonsense. Moving on, regardless. Don't forget, we got the elect, or the debates coming up. Those are going to be exciting. What, what type of back room? Cabal and CIA operation is going to go on during the week the, the debates happen. Well, that's what's going to go. Because <laughs> these are going to be exciting. Trump spurns traditional debate prep with first face-off less than three weeks away. Some allies of the president worry that the cavalier approach to debate with Joe Biden could backfire. Uh, having seen Joe Biden in recent videos, I'm going to say probably not. I'm going to say that these debates are going to make it so painfully obvious that Joe Biden cannot win the election, no matter how hard they try to rig it, that when they do try to rig it, it will be obvious that they've tried to rig it, and that their little coup attempt to overthrow the U.S. government is going to fail. Uh, gloriously, if that even. We'll move on. Sole survivor of the Kenosha protest shooting speaks out for the first time. To be fair, someone else was shot at, and they just, he just missed him. They got away. The, the dude who kicked him, who ran up and kicked him, he got shot at twice, I think he missed, and he, like, walks away. Lucky day. Maybe that guy will go on and do something beautiful and, like, help pay it forward, maybe. But this guy sure isn't. Little survivor Kenosha protest shooting speaks out for the first time. Here's Gage Rose Crux, pretty sure. Yeah, Gage Gross Crux. Look at his face, man. How hot is it in that studio? Gonna watch this video. Uh, let's just listen to it. That's all I think about. Gage Cr Gross Crux Twenty Two told CNN in an exclusive interview Tuesday. I play it back in my head. I think about it all the time. The gunshots, the screams, and the chaos that followed still play out in his head as if it were August twenty fifth again. I think about everything all the time. Gross Crux said. That night, protesters in the Wisconsin city were demanding justice. Yeah, we know the story. We get it. Rose Crux says he packed his medic bag and his licensed gun. Could have swore he was a felon. Uh, it's, there's so much disinfo. I don't know what's going on, but it, it appears if he was a felon. I don't know how a felon had a licensed gun, but I, I did not look into that too much. Don't blame me. But here we go, CNN Clown News Network are going to give this guy who pointed a gun at the head, a pistol at the head of Kyle, runs up to Kyle beforehand and is filming, and he asks Kyle, what are you doing? He says, I'm going to the police. And then this guy, Gage, tells the mob to get him, and then he points a gun at him, and then he gets his arm shot. And now he's sole survivor he's going to speak out cnn's going to give him this really sympathetic interview just like vice gave that michael reinhold an interview remember this remember this you know cnn huge big 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 mainstream media news network possibly one of the biggest giving uh that the blm side the antifa side the whatever you want to put gage rose crooks on that side giving him a platform just like the, just like vice 
huge mainstream media outlet gave Michael Reinhold the platform. When the media is behind your movement, you aren't the resistance. You're not. Oh, wow. Billion dollar uh, companies and corporations like Amazon, they all support you. Disney supports you. Twitter, Netflix, all these people, they all support you. Facebook supports you. Like, at what point do you stop and say, like, wait a minute? Oh, shit. We're the boots. They're the resistance. Fuck. It's weird. It's just, I guess, because, like, we're used to the resistance dressing up like Antifa and BLM with the, with the masks and the grungy sort of, like, punk scene. Like, that's what the resistance looks like. That was the counterculture. But it, it's, it's maybe they, like, switched or they flopped or the, the corporations, the powers that be were like, yeah, we can actually, that's a good look. People won't ever suspect. Nobody would suspect that Hot Topic was owned by the same people who own Banana Republic. No fucking way. <laughs> Yeah, it just so happens that conservatives and patriots who have a very, I mean, at, at, the, at worst, they have a thick head. They're very stubborn. But they tend to, you know, not dress like that. But some do. I'm a conservative. I have a face tat. People say it looks like I do meth. People in the comments, I, I don't do meth. I don't even smoke weed. I don't even do, I, I stopped drinking coffee. I just have big pupils because I have a lazy eye. I don't, I've always had big pupils since I was a little kid. Sorry. I don't do math. If I did math, this video would probably be done in five minutes and not however long this, how long is this? Yeah, it would already be done by now. Let's move on. So here we have a video of an attempted kidnapping in, in South Africa. Very crazy video, but we do have a chat on the scene. Check it out. I always watch these videos and I try to figure out like, at what point do they realize something's happening? Do you think he realized, she realized then? Like, what is this? What's happening? And all of a sudden, I'm gonna take your baby. Like, whoa, no, what are you doing, bro? We got the Chad. Chad, I believe, knows MMA because he's about to put him in a rear naked choke. Yeah, very good. He's gonna put the body legs, hooks in. Yeah. yeah shout out to that Chad. Incredible. And shout out to this lady diving over the table like nope like she knows what's happening she's about to protect the baby she knows dives over wow very traumatic very very ridiculous security forces wow like is this how the cabal gets their kids i feel like this is not how the cabal gets their kids. it's like they probably did this in the past they're like dude we got to come up with something better we literally can't just run up, hop a fence, and try to snatch a kid by the head. Like, what are they talking? What is going on? Man, so that's in West Branch, South Africa. That happened, I believe, today or yesterday. But I mean, this, this could be an old video. It could be an old video. I don't know. But I'm seeing it today, but you're seeing it today. So we'll move on. If you didn't know, uh, Esme Murphy, I talked about this earlier. She was reporting on the, the George, Fo George Floyd case. There was a hearing today. There's actually some pretty cool stuff going on there. I think the biggest piece of evidence or the biggest uh, happening that happened from this would be that the prosecutor attorney, prosecuting attorneys from the state, they actually, a lot of them actually got dismissed because they had met with the autopsy doctor two days afterwards. Conflict of interest because they'd be witnesses. And then also, uh, let's see if we can find it. Judge Cahill says, a pill was visible in George Floyd's mouth in Thomas Lane body camera footage. So the defense is making the case that George Floyd died of a fentanyl because he swallowed fentanyl and he died of a fentanyl overdose. And then the judge is saying in this hearing, a pill was visible. So the judge says this. So, I mean, you got to consider and prepare for the possibility that there's going to be massive riots if people, these men get acquitted. And think about it. Do you want to put innocent men in jail? So that an entire city doesn't riot and burn it down. Very hard to get information out there accurately. We have been abandoned by the mainstream media. We're literally fighting an info war. It's optics. That's really what's going on. So I don't know. I, I hope that there's... It, so when, you, when you're discussing this, you have to be careful about not being edgy. You don't want to push it too far in one way and then no one's going to listen to you. 
Because if you're not willing to ever admit that you're wrong, or you're not willing to admit that like maybe there's more to the story than you know, if you leave out certain details to make your, your point on your side more exciting or believable or sensational, then that often discredits your credibility. And what we need right now is a lot of credible news sources. I'm not saying I'm the most credible at all by any means. I try to stay objective, but I'm mostly just trying to entertain. But, you know, I wish we had more people out there who could uh, articulate this information to more people from different backgrounds, because there's a lot of echo chambers. And we need people who would potentially riot to understand that, yo, but what would... Think about if you were in, in Derek Chauvin's shoes. Think about if you were one of those cops on the side who didn't do anything at all. You you want them to be arrested for not doing something when that guy is following procedure, et cetera? You want, when, when we have evidence that Floyd may have died of a fentanyl overdose, that he swallowed the drugs, they didn't want to get arrested for them? And what would you do in that situation? We want empathy on both sides. So we'll move on. Here we have this weird trend. This is the weirdest trend. I mean, I can say that now, but there's so many weird trends in 2020. But we have these pe girls on TikTok doing weird Holocaust uh, videos. So it's POV Holocaust for some reason. Oh, hi. Welcome to heaven. How did you die and what do you look like? I died in gas chambers in Auschwitz. I am so sorry. Thank you. What the fuck is that? What the fuck did I just watch? That was like the pianist played backwards in 15 languages all at the same time, kind of confusing. So I think she's in heaven. Oh, hi, welcome to heaven. Okay, no, the POV is the person in the camp. So we are the Auschwitz survivor. This is an angel, I guess. Isla is an angel. Oh, hi, welcome to heaven. How did you die and why do you look like that? <laughs> what do you mean when I look like why, why the long face? Oh, I'm a Jew. <laughs> It's just a joke. It's just a joke. I find long nose attractive. That's my thing. You might have your thing. But this is weird. I died by gas chambers in Auschwitz. Wait, so who's who? I can't tell who's who. Okay, no, this is the Auschwitz. This is the survivor. What do you mean? Why does she look like that? Why does she look like she's got hella makeup on? Because it's a TikTok video. She's probably underage. Uh, regardless, TikTok is disgusting. We'll move on. Manga, anime, Netflix adaptation. It's good, I think, to just throw in some eye bleach in between every now and then. To just, to just get a giggle. By the way, this manga looks sick. I never read the manga for Akira. I know I'm a weeb because I can say Akira instead of Akira. It's Ryu, dude. It's Ryu. <laughs> but, uh... I heard that like like 90 pages are devoted to just like two panel wide destructions and there's not actually a lot of story but I don't know. Does anyone know what this movie is actually about? I've heard lots of interpretations. I've heard that it's about like uh, an immature person coming to uh, coming into controlling a, an incredible power much like the United States came into controlling the nuke. What you, how that power would corrupt you, how it would change you, in much the same way that Tetsuo gets that power, he uses it to settle a childhood grievance of his. Regardless, Netflix fucks everything up. Why this? Were we supposed to be excited? I was so excited when Netflix had like eight billion dollars donated to making original programming. When all these streaming services were doing their own thing, I was like, yes, finally, we're gonna get some awesome original ideas. It's gonna be based. It's gonna be cool. Yeah, there'll be some gay stuff, but no, it'll be awesome. No, it's all gay. All of it. 99.5% of it is gay. I would shout out this, though. The Boys, I think The Boys is decent. I like it. I think it's probably better than the comics, from what I've seen of the comics. It's on Amazon, if you haven't seen it. It's probably the, the best new thing that I've watched recently. I haven't seen a lot of good shit recently since they ruined Game of Thrones. Uh, what else have I seen recently that's good? What have you seen recently that's good? It's hard. it's hard to find good things, man. Started to watch lots of old movies. Watch that old uh, U-57-1 or whatever with Matthew McConaughey and the German submarine, Bill Paxton. I like Matthew McConaughey. And on there. Let's move on. Complaining about unrealistic depictions of women in video games. Here's the feminist frequency radio. And here's what they look like in real life. 
So these women have a podcast where they complain about unrealistic depictions of women in video games. This is their logo. This is what they've drawn themselves to look like. This is what they look like. Okay, this one's kind of close-ish. This one, no, I'm sorry. This one, what? This one is like night and... This one is like night and night on a different planet. This is like not even remotely. This is like you used your Bitmoji to create this. Yeah, there we go. There, this is what they should look like. I don't know, I figured that would be funny. Throw a little bit of jokes in there just so we're not talking about boring politics. Ugh. C-SPAN. Oh, what else we got though? Oh, here's a good idea from Renee. Alcoholic. <laughs> Hashtag hug your daughters. Can we just have an actual lockdown? Close pubs, restaurants, bars, and non-essential shops again. Nationwide testing so it's easy to trace. Cancel flights and out-of-country transport. It's not fucking hard. Can we just like actually lock down? Why isn't anyone like just doing it? It's not fucking hard. Hella retweets. Hella likes. Ugh. September 8th. Why isn't, why isn't anyone listening to Renee? The alcoholic. Why isn't anybody? Because it would be over in like a week. We get it done with. All right, here's my theory on all of it. If it's okay to wear a mask and go to the grocery store, if it's okay to wear a mask and go do this, that, the other, why isn't it okay to wear a mask and go do anything? I don't know. I don't want to talk about COVID too much because that's what got my channel banned for a week. And there's a plethora of information out there talking about it. So you just just know where I stand on the topic. Move on. Breitbart is telling us it doesn't have to be Breitbart. You can look this up. Burger King has launched a new ad campaign featuring its mascot sharing a deep kiss with Ronald McDonald. Captioned, Love Conquers All. Hey, look at that. That's some fucking peak clown world virtue signaling nonsense. Let's have the Burger King. But it, it, Donald, Ronald isn't even royalty. This would never happen. There's no alliance being made. It doesn't make any sense. This is ridiculous. Wendy, where's Wendy? Wendy's bad. Wendy and Ronald look like they're brother and sister pretty much. They both look like Raggedy Ann and Andy all grown up and turned into a franchise. You know, this, this reminds me of this. Giant Meteor 2020 just ended already. If you're going to take all my favorite shows, you're going to make Iceman gay from the X-Men. You're going to make everything gay. You're going to ruin Game of Thrones. You're probably going to ruin Lord of the Rings with the new Amazon series. You're just going to ruin every single thing I like. Gamergate's going to ruin all my, all my games. Everything like that's going to get fucked. You're going to take my fast food that I don't even eat anymore because I got healthy but you're gonna ruin all my nostalgia and my memories I'm making them gay and kiss each other why just end it end it actually no we should be optimistic we can't be pessimistic while giant meteor does have a good platform I do agree with a lot of the a lot of the policies that giant meteor has in store for 2020 I agree but I just I can't vote that way. I'm just not that extreme. So yeah, I think we should stay optimistic. We should stay uh, away from pessimism, away from fatalism. Don't get black pilled. Don't think it's all fucked. It's all completely no. It's not fucked in front of your face. In front of your face. That's where you can control your area, your house, your loved ones, your people. You can impact their lives and make their lives better just by being nice, just by giving them a compliment, just by being there to listen to them. You can do that. You can make the world a better place. And literally, if you think about it, you only have 24 hours in the day. And so, like, if you spend however many of those hours, like, ingesting certain amounts of data or information and stimuli, and some of that stimuli comes from a friend, and the friend is just being genuinely nice to you, then if you do that with enough of, of those hours, your entire worldview is starts to become that you have a good life. And you could do that to another person. It's very easy. It's very cheap for you to do that for another person. So yeah, that's why I always try to end my things with call your mom and, you know, stay vigilant, uh, take everything you hear with a grain of salt. 
Uh, if you support independent investigative journalism and you like this type, type of content, you can check out my description. I do have a Patreon and there's other ways you can support it. But just comment and tell me what you think. That's my favorite. I like to hear what people think. And if you want to send me links, honestly, the best way to do that is through Patreon because I don't know if Google does uh, direct messages anymore. But yeah, if you want to send me something for a video to check out, there's like polls and stuff you can see. Shout out to all the people who do support me on Patreon. It's incredible. It has definitely been motivating for me to do this as much as I can. So yeah, uh, bye mom. Peace. Also, I hope these levels are good.